Welcome to our devotional. Here is where we learn more about our Heavenly Father. Join us. You don't want to miss out on this blessing. Living Stones Church. Hello, Living Stones Church. My name is Cameron, and I'm going to lead you through today's English devotional. I'm hoping that over the next sessions, I'll be able to look at how the Bible can teach us relevant things that can really help us in everyday life. I'm also aiming that by putting the Bible into practice, we feel closer to Jesus, and that we'll be able to help others do the same. Now today, I want to talk about everyone's favorite topic, self-control. Self-control, yes, that's what I'm talking about, and I know what you're thinking, that's not my favorite topic. But that's okay, it's an important topic, and we need to talk about it and it's relatable. I think everybody has some area of their life they could be more controlled in. It may be something you need a lot of help in, or it may be something small, but there's always room for improvement. Because as long as you have a self, you're gonna need to control it. So that's why I wanna talk to you about self-control. It's something we all need help with on some level. And I want to touch on some tactics to help us in our battle to become more self-controlled. So let's get into it. Now earlier I mentioned that sometimes self-control is not everyone's favourite thing. It may just feel like really hard work to be self-controlled, to be prudent, to be careful, to hold back, to say no. It's not as uplifting as, um, say, joy, love or kindness. Self-control is a fruit of the spirit, yes, but that fruit can taste bitter at first. It's a bit like grapefruit, but self-control is really good for us. And like grapefruit, it may taste unpleasant at first, but over time, we will come to endure it, maybe even like it. And the most important thing, it's good for us. Having self-control is a very spiritually healthy thing. But it can be hard. Being self-controlled can be really hard. It can be difficult to say no to the things you want, but aren't right for you, or not at the right time. It can be a struggle to hold back your anger or revenge, or strong desires? But why? Why is it a struggle? Well, the Bible has an answer for this. The Bible says there are two forces at play in any battle of self-control. It feels difficult because there's a war going on. There is a war going on in your body, in your mind, in your heart, and in your soul. There is a battle going on between two opposite sides, the side of the flesh and the spirit. The Bible says this, and it says, For the flesh craves what is contrary, that is the opposite, to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are opposed to each other, so that you do not do what you want. So see that? It says they are opposed to each other, the flesh and the spirit. They are contrary. No wonder it feels like a struggle. No wonder it feels like a battle. But why does it need to be this way? Well, if we pay attention to the last part of that verse, it says, so that you do not do whatever you want. So clearly, this is saying that doing whatever you want is not good. Living by the flesh is not good for you. But there is a human will to do whatever we want. There is a human desire to be totally and utterly free without consequence. It's probably why we play video games where the sky's the limit, where you can do whatever you want. The thing is, we live in the real world. There are consequences. You can't do whatever you want. There are immediate and sometimes long-term consequences for uncontrolled freedom. We need to be self-controlled so that we avoid negative consequences. Self-control keeps us safe. Self-control keeps us spiritually healthy. Self-control is good for us. So how do we not do whatever we want? Well, remember, we saw before there are two opposite forces, the flesh and the spirit. Well, clearly, we need to choose on the side of the spirit to have control over the flesh. The Bible calls this to walk by the spirit. This is what the Bible says in the verse before the one I was talking about. It says, Walk by the spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. We must walk by the spirit to be more self-controlled. So what does that mean? How do we walk by the Spirit? 
Well, we were saying that there are two forces at play in self-control. There is your flesh, what you want to do, but you know is not good for you, and the spirit, what's God's will, because it's good for you. So the first step is to tell the difference between the voices in our head. We have to work out who's talking. If we can identify the desires of God and the desires of our selfishness, then we've taken the first step to walking by the Spirit. And to do this, we must read God's Word. How can we know His voice if we don't recognize it, if we don't read it, if we don't understand it? This is really good training to do this. Read the Bible every day and you'll learn how to recognize God's voice. Develop a strict routine. Read the Bible at the same time every day. Self-control in one area can give you more control in other areas. Secondly, learn from those more experienced than you. It's important to learn for yourself, but why not draw on the wisdom of those older than you and who have been trained well? If you want to get fit, you'll ask somebody fitter than you, right? If you want to be smart, you'll ask somebody smarter. So if you want to be self-controlled, you'll ask someone more self-controlled. You'll ask someone who has developed an intimate relationship with God, learned how to manage their desires, and knows how to be strong in temptation. So to summarize, self-control is hard. There's unfortunately not much we can do about this, but we can be kind to ourselves, knowing why this is the case. And that's because there are two opposite forces, the spirit and the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. When we know which is which, we can take the first step to choosing the way of the Spirit. And what I want to say to this point is that in self-control, you always have a chance to say no. No matter how much Netflix you've watched, you can always say, that's enough, I'm going to stop now. And it may be painful to stop, but you can do it. The flesh will say, oh, what's another one more? It won't matter. But if you are close to God, another voice will say, it's really not that good. You can stop now. There's always a way out. And the Bible says this. It says, And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. There is always a way out. There is always a chance to say no. Don't be fooled and don't be deceived. You can say no. You can be more self-controlled. And it's never too late to stop doing something bad. No temptation has overtaken you. This is what the Bible says. It says no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Only that which is common to mankind. So everyone has been through temptation. You share something in common with your friend when you battle with self-control. And this is my next point. You are not alone in this struggle. It's so important not to do it alone. A battle is so much more difficult when you're the only one in the trench. And this is why you need to talk to someone, to seek help, to chat to a friend, to ask someone to come alongside you in your desire to be more self-controlled. And as I was saying before, try to ask someone more experienced than you, so that you're learning from someone who's trained and learned, a mentor if you will. And we all have different areas of struggle with self-control. Maybe there's an area in your life where you are very controlled. Maybe you are controlled with food, with your finances, with anger, with organisation. Maybe you can really help someone and be a real ally to someone in need. You never know until you really get to know those in your church and in the body of Christ on a deeper level. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. We each have our strengths, so let's use them to our advantage. Let's challenge and encourage one another so that we can have victory in the areas of our life that we struggle with. You never know what a difference you'll make in the life of another person. So, to summarize again, our battle with self-control is just that. It's a battle. A battle between two opposing teams. But this battle is common to everyone. Everyone goes through this. But God has a way out in every temptation. And there's always a chance to say no. And because this struggle is common to all of us, we don't have to do it alone. Get help. Tell someone. Share. Encourage. You may have a struggle, but you also have a gift. 
Whilst everyone has a struggle, everyone has a strength. And that strength can be someone else's life jacket. Use it and help someone out. Well, that's all I have time for today in talking about self-control. So please take some time to do your own study and let this message sink in. I'm sure if you have an area that God wants to work in, He will reveal it to you. So continue to seek who He is and get to know His voice so that you can win the battles and choose to be more self-controlled. God bless you all. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you'll connect again for our next devotional. May God bless you.